This is the Zhiyun Cinepeer Gimbal, probably one of the least expensive gimbals out there for mirrorless cameras, up to 6.6 .6 pounds right now, and it's pretty impressive. I've been testing this out for the last few weeks, and overall, I'm really impressed with what this gimbal is capable of. So if you're in the market for a gimbal, then definitely watch this video through to see if this one might just be the right gimbal for you. Now, in full disclosure, Zhiyun did send this gimbal to me to keep, but they're not paying for this review. They're not sponsoring this video. These opinions are my own and they don't get to see the video before it's launched. So first, this is a really simple gimbal. There's not a lot to it. It's obviously super inexpensive and that's the whole point. So inside this cardboard box, gets you get this, which is just a styrofoam case. Lift it up and open it up. And there's the gimbal laid out inside. You've got your uh, <clears throat> Manfrotto style plate with a quarter 20. Got your recharging cable. You get the gimbal inside, which is really lightweight. Has the gimbal locks, plates, some basic controls here. You get the dial, focus wheel, trigger, menu, power buttons, small screen, this, that. You also get a tripod base. So on the bottom gimbal, you get three quarter 20s for whatever reason. And like most gimbals now, it has locks, so you can lock the arms wherever you need them to be. And then this part will slide out and put it where you need it to go. But also, if you're a vertical video shooter, they made this plate button here, slide it off, slide it back on, and then suddenly you've got a vertical mount for your camera. I don't really shoot vertical video, so take that for what you will. Because this gimbal will handle up to 6.6 .6 pounds, I was curious to see how it would handle my A1 with the 24 to 105. And actually, I shot a ton of footage that you're going to see in this video using the Tamron 50 to 300, fully extended at 300, which is really impressive because that's a pretty long lens when it's fully extended. Balancing is really actually pretty simple, especially if you use the plate that I do that converts to Arca Swiss. Get it tucked in here. I'm going to lock it up. There's a lever under here that locks the plate from moving left to right. So you want to lock that one. And then there's this lever, which locks the plate on the camera from moving front to left. So they're a little bit close together and you got to make sure you've got the right one. I'm going to start off by balancing the uh, front to back axis here. So we're going to get this, probably set this out at 50 millimeters. Get this balanced right in there for now. Now the big thing is you want this to be balanced on this axis here. So I'm gonna push this up here. We want the camera to just stay pointed straight up at some point. Get that kind of tweaked. That's pretty good there. Tighten that back down. Then we'll double check this. It's a little back heavy. Squeeze this forward just a touch. Just like that, I'm gonna lock that axis. And then this one. So this, obviously, it's a little heavy on the right side, so we'll push it to a little bit to the left. That looks good there. And then the pan axis. So you tip that, it's a little too front heavy. Back this up like that. That's pretty good. Go back forward just a tiny bit. All right, now that all three axes are axes, axi, axis, axis, now that all three axes are balanced, we're going to turn it on and do the quick calibration process, which is actually super easy. So now from here, you hit the menu button, and this does have a nice little advanced, uh, bright OLED screen. So this little scroll wheel here is actually for, uh, you push it to select, and then you can scroll up and down so i hit the auto tune and it's going to run through its auto tune process now like i said i've spent i don't know the last month and a half using this gimbal exclusively on some commercial projects and on a bunch of really just fun projects and i've been really impressed by how well it works granted it's an inexpensive gimbal which means it doesn't have all the bells and whistles or anything like that but honestly it does exactly what it needs to do, which is stabilize footage really well. So now that it's balanced, we'll hit the menu button, come out of there, and then you can see like it holds the camera really well. You can triple tap on the trigger button and go into selfie mode if you wanted to do that. Uh, triple tap again, it'll go around front. Of course, double trap recenters it if you happen to use the joystick and push it off. Now you can connect this to the camera using a cable, 
I'm not doing that right now because of the way I have my camera buttons set up. I have to remap them in order for the gimbal to see them correctly, but it does work. I tried it out, it works great, just like every other Zhiyun gimbal I've ever had. So like I said, I've spent the last few weeks using this gimbal exclusively on some client jobs. Now I don't use a gimbal all the time, but anytime I'm doing client work, generally I'll have it with me just in case. And it really has been fantastic. You can see here the footage that comes out of it. It's really nice, it's smooth, it's exactly what it should be. The gimbal follows your motions just like it should to give you that really smooth gliding feel. Now, of course, a couple of things you need to do to get the best out of it is make sure it's balanced well, make sure it's calibrated, and then also walk softly, do the ninja walk so that you get the best out of the gimbal. But if you do those things, this gimbal gives you some fantastic results. And to me, the way to test it the best is to use a really long lens and then see what sort of footage you can get out of it. So I took the Tamron 50 to 300, put it on here, and then uh, put the lens all the way out at 300. And the results are actually really nice. So as you can see, even at 300 millimeters, the gimbal does a good job. Now granted, the Tamron lens is a very lightweight lens, which makes it ideal for doing something like this. And honestly, most of the time I'm using a gimbal, I'm using 16, 20, 35, maybe 50 millimeters. I usually don't go in really long other than that, but it does give you some really fantastic results. And it is kind of fun to play with really long focal lengths and the parallax that you get out of it. Hey, if you're enjoying or getting value out of this video, then consider subscribing. My goal is to help other solo creators like myself make good decisions when it comes to purchasing gear, but also to get the most out of the gear you already have by teaching you the tips and tricks you need to know to use it. If that's something that interests you, then hit the subscribe button. It won't cost you anything. It'll definitely can easily unsubscribe later. But at the end of the day, the question is like, do you really need a gimbal? And the answer for me is I always have one gimbal still because when I'm doing certain types of client work, whether it's real estate stuff or maybe a walkthrough of somebody's office or even just like kind of a walk and talk follow around, I have a gimbal just so that I can get some of those shots that are really nice and steady. They look really smooth. Um, I don't use it on everything. I don't use it for most of my YouTube videos anymore, but I do use it on almost every single client job. So if you're looking for a gimbal that does exactly what it's supposed to do, which is give you really smooth footage on a payload up to, you know, six pounds or so, then this one is definitely one to consider because of the price, which is really excellent at $250 or less if you can find it on sale. And the features you get out of it is exactly what a gimbal should do. Smooth footage, no bells and whistles, just a really simple but really great and easy to operate gimbal system that gives you what you need. Now next you're gonna watch this video right over here. I'll see you over there as always. If you have questions, ask me in the comments below or join my live stream which happens most Wednesday nights at 4 p.m. Alaska time, 8 p.m. Eastern. We can have more of a conversation. I can answer questions maybe that I didn't get to in this video. I'll see you again soon in the next one. Cheers.